Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. Welcome back to another Division 2 video. It is build week, yes sir. We got a bunch of information out about the U20, but now it's time to focus on the builds. And I got a monster of a build for you. Insane survivability while still shredding through enemies. Yes, this is my 52%, you heard it right. 52% armor on kill build, giving you tons, tons of survivability while still shredding through everything that the game has to offer. As you can see in the background, I'm shredding through heroic Lincoln, just beaming everybody down while still having that survivability up to par. This is a great combination. There are a bunch of combinations that you can make for that armor on kill build. I will probably give you a few of those build in the next coming days, but this is my 52% armor on kill and no, don't worry, it is not a striker build. Yes, striker builds are still very, very good. And I will probably bring one out as well. But this is not a striker build. We went into full armor on kill and some damage output. But without further ado, let's dive right into the build breakdown. I think you saw enough. So let's see what this monster is all about. And there we are. This is the build that you just saw. This is the 52% armor on kill build. Still shredding through enemies while there is a tons of survivability. Starting with my specialization, of course. This is the gunner specialization. That first 10% armor on kill comes from our gunner specialization. And that third reload faster comes in clutch as well. Don't forget to stack into your assault rifle damage. Assault Rifle Damage, yes, we're rocking the Saint Elmos. 105.6k on this build, 850 RPM, a mag of 70, and it has an expertise of level 24. It comes with damage to target out of cover. Next to that, you can choose whatever you want for the weapons, for your secondary, and for your pistol. I would go for guns that you don't have proficient yet, newer guns from this season. Put them in your pistol slot. Put them in your normal secondary slot and you will get those extra XP in so you don't have to donate materials or duplicates of course. Then jumping over to the setup of the build starting with my mask and my backpack and those are both from Bellstone. 1% armor generation, 10% armor on kill again. So this is the 20% armor on kill in total. I went for critical hit chance, critical hit damage, critical hit damage mod on there. You have to find it this way so you can roll that weapon damage over the normal armor core. But if you want a little bit more survivability, you can of course also go for an extra armor core. But with this build, i rather have zero blues and I'm gonna explain a little bit later. Then jumping over to the second piece of Bellstone, this of course activates what we just talked about. That second 10% armor on kill, boosting us up to that 20% armor on kill. Again, I went for full reds. I found it with weapon handling and critical hit damage on there. So that gave me the opportunity to roll that armor core away again for 15% weapon damage. In a perfect world, you want to find this with 6% critical hit chance and 12% critical hit damage. But I found it with weapon handling and it's still, still very good on this build. I chose to go for 12% critical hit damage mod. And this is the Bellstone Liquid Engineer, and this comes with perfect bloodsucker. Killing an enemy adds and refreshes a stack of 12% bonus armor for 10 seconds. Max stack is 10. So this is our third armor on kill piece. That's 12%, boosting us up to 32% armor on kill. Officially, because of course we're gaining an extra 12% bonus armor as well all the way up to 120%. So in a perfect world, with only this backpack, only Bellstone, and only our specialization, we are hitting 32% armor on kill, while we're gaining all the way up to 120% bonus armor. And that's why this combination is so incredibly good. 
you again could go for an armor core instead of that weapon damage core. It's gonna be a little bit easier to farm for, but still, like I said, go straight red. This has so, so much survivability. You don't need those blues. Talking about the blues, jumping over to the only blue on this build, and that's the 511. Don't worry, these are the death grips. Yes, these are the named 511 gloves because this is the only piece that might be worth going for from 511 because this gives us 30% health as the first brand set bonus that we're not really building towards on this build. Why the death grips though? Because there it is, another 10% armor on kill. I rolled 12% critical hit damage on as the attribute, but again, in a perfect world, I would love to find this with critical hit damage already on there so I can roll that armor core away for another red core. Yes, it still gives us that extra survivability with this armor, but you all know me, I love to shoot my red builds. But overall, I'm very, very content with this armor and this roll for that extra armor on kill, boosting us already up to 42% armor on kill. And then going over to the last piece that will add some extra armor on kill, and that's the new brand set, Palisade Steelworks. And again, 10% armor on kill on our first brand set bonus, boosting us up to that 52% armor on kill without even talking about, of course, that extra bonus armor that perfect bloodsucker gives us. This is the full setup for all armor on kill. There are a bunch of different combinations, but I enjoyed this one the most. Of course, you can do it with some striker as well, but there are so, so many striker builds already out there, like I said in the intro. So I just chose to go for something else because the striker build hits a lot harder. But this is a lot of fun to play with as well. So, Palisade Steelworks, again, I chose to go for critical hit damage, critical hit chance mod on there. I found it with weapon handling. Again, in a perfect world, I would love to see this with 6% critical hit chance and 12% critical hit damage. So I can roll that armor core away for some weapon damage. And we went for obliterate, of course. Critical hits increase our total weapon damage by 1% for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 25 times. This is again boosted as well, right? Obliterate used to be 5 seconds, but now it's 10 seconds. You have so much more time to keep Obliterate procced and always be at that extra 25% weapon damage. So this is the whole overview of all the pieces that you need to get for your armor on kill build. Next to that, I chose to go for Seska. Why Seska? Because this ups our critical hit chance, critical hit chance, critical hit damage on there. And then next to that I chose to go for a little bit more damage output and with damage to target out of cover with the Fox sprayers. Again, I chose for critical hit damage on there and then of course weapon damage. That's pretty much the whole overview of the build. I chose to go for my revive hive. Of course, to give us an extra life if we go down that you don't really go down with with this build. It is a freaking survivability monster while still doing a decent amount of damage. I chose to go for 10% reviver armor repair, 5% range, 10% health as the mods. And then for my secondary skill, I chose to go for my favorite, the Riot Foam. Trap and Shred with this thing. I love this thing. It has two ammo because I chose to go for one extra ammo and 9.8% in share duration as the mods on there. Whole overview of the build. Let's jump over to the stats and let me show you real quick that the stats are pretty pretty decent as well. Looking at the critical hit chance, 58%. Like I always say, build towards that 55 to 60% first before building in all of your other damages. And we have 161% critical hit damage. But don't forget, this is not the perfect build. We can still gain that extra 6% critical hit chance on our chest and on our backpack, so we can remove another 6% mods, so we can gain 24% extra critical hit damage 
boosting us up to 58% crit chance and 185% critical hit damage. So in a perfect world, you can definitely, you can definitely hit harder than I do right now. But still, with this setup, it is just so, so incredibly good. Then jumping over to, of course, the armor on kill side, we have 365.2k armor on kill. Don't forget, this is without the Bloodsucker. This is without that 12% armor on kill. And of course, without that extra bonus armor on kill as well. That can go all the way up to 120% extra bonus armor. So in a perfect world, you can hit that 2 million armor while still shredding through people. This is such, such a great build. But that's pretty much it. Hit me in the comments down below what you think about this build. Like I said, there are so many ways to build this build, of course. And this is mine for now. I will bring out a bunch more builds this week. This is going to be build week. Yes, sir. We brought out a bunch of other content about all the changes and all the awesome stuff that TU20 brought. And now it's time to show you the builds. I got a bunch. So let me know in the comments down below how you built that armor on kill build. Do you think that 52% is too much? Do we need more? Because yes, there are builds out there that can give you more armor on kill. But will have a little less damage output. Or is this perfect? Let me know in the comments down below how you building it. But that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for sticking until the end. If you're still here, like the video if you liked it or helped you out in any way or form. And of course, if you're new here, you want to be updated about the Division 2, the Division Universe and the future Division 3 because it is announced. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And I will see you in the next one. Pure Prime out.